record on the cloud here. Eh? So, I record it so presently. I can in Computer mingi, you can get a Now, now,
Hello, good morning. Morning. Where are they? And you are okay. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning, morning, good 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 and I'm sorry that we have been late a bit. What? <coughs> okay. Sorry, morning. Sorry. I'm sorry that you have been late a little bit, but uh, we are going to still continue from where we talked last time and uh, before we went for midterm we had uh, we introduced something to do with the oral literature and uh, from the field that we shared with you we started we had uh, the introduction of oral literature i'm saying that uh, oral literature is a spoken art that is transmitted through the word of mouth we went again that and saying that uh, in all literature that is before even before the coming of the Europeans or the whites, Africans had their way of passing the, the information from one generation to another. That is through the word of mouth. That is what we refer to as a or literature. And we still saying that uh, we have the various importance of or literature or the importance of studying or literature in a school. And uh, one of them, and one of the one of them being uh, the one of the importances, as we seen from the other time, was that uh, we have uh, education that uh, or literature is uh, essential when it comes to education, as it is there to instill uh, maybe advice, to give advice, to question to the young generation, or even from one generation to another. Another use of the uh, importance of uh, or literature, we're saying that uh, it is there for entertainment, and uh, we're saying that uh, or literature is entertaining as it happens in relieving stress, and uh, apart from that one, we're also saying that uh, as we listen and we watch performances, we enjoy this art. We also have uh, another importance as uh, it is used to identify to question. We have various narratives that uh, apart from narratives, we also have this uh, uh, as a proverb, which, which also fall part uh, in this uh, literature that I used to caution, to give advice as, as we shall see in the various 
uh, what as we continue, we shall look at uh, some of these things. We also saying that uh, another importance of uh, this literature is that uh, it is part or forms part of a uh, socialization as we interact with this. As we interact through socialization, be socialization, we say that uh, it brings people together. Especially when we have the narratives, we find that um, we have uh, some people coming together. One of them being a narrator. Then, as soon as it, we find that there is that kind of interaction, um, interaction among what among those people that are present. Sorry, there was some interaction. Now, today, I want us now, apart from having looked at all those things, I will say that uh, our literature is divided into three major categories. One of them being oral narratives. One of them being oral narratives. We have another group that is a uh, oral poetry stroke songs oral poetry stroke songs we also have a uh, uh, the other group is short forms short forms shall uh, deal with them as we get to the form form two now i want us to look at uh, various what the oral oral narratives and uh, in oral narratives we have various character. We have various different types of narratives. I should have seen, but before that, I want us to start by looking at various characteristics of oral narratives. Characteristics of oral narratives, and as as we shall see, number one, we have uh, we have uh, one of the various features or characteristics of oral narratives is that uh, they do have uh, most of them, although not all of them, but most of them uh, of these oral narratives have uh, an opening formula. Now, when we talk of this opening formula, uh, for example, that is uh, in these oral narratives, we have uh, unique features that help you to identify the oral narrative. And uh, as I have said about the uh, oral, as I
I'm sorry, we have a proper minute work, but we shall still continue. Before the we were, I was talking about the various uh, features or characteristics of oral narratives, and uh, I had seen that we have usually have uh, most of them have an uh, opening formula, which uh, and for example we may have uh, once upon a time. We may also start a long, long time ago. And we also we may also have uh, there once lived, there one was on during our grandfather's time. This is um, as you can see, this part of what as the opening formula. And this opening formula usually have functions, usually have has usually has various functions and one of the functions of this literature this sorry not original but uh, opening formula is that uh, it identifies the, the the narrator once one since once upon a time in a group of people we automatically comes to know that this is the one that is going to narrate uh, to have uh, as the narrator it may also remove the audience the one of reality and takes them to the world of imagination whereby anything will be possible. An audience, I say, whether we I was talking about the oral, about the functions, uh, the characteristics of oral narratives. And I had talked about uh, this uh, opening formula, and I've talked about its functions. Let's now look at uh, another characteristics of uh, these uh, oral narratives, the other one being uh, the closing formula. And uh, as you look at uh, the some of the these uh, crossing formulas as we have in a narrative, we might hear from a narrator saying that uh, from then onwards, this is what happened. Another one we may have, uh, and there lived happily ever after. I'm just quoting some of these uh, examples of the crossing formula. Again, we may have, uh, and that is why the hyena does this one. And that is, um, the, we may also have, that is why this happened, we must have a, that's the end of my story. We have several functions of this uh, closing formula, and as we shall see, is that uh, it marks the end of what? It marks the end of our narrative. Again, it uh, momentarily releases the audience from the wand of imagination to the reality. Because once we hear, for example, there ends my, there ends my story or narrative, we come to hear that uh, maybe this now, that our mind is able now to be brought from the world of imagination to the reality. Again, uh, it also clears the way for the word for the next narrator. It clears the way for the next narrator or the, the activity. Again, we may have a, again, we may have a, another feature that is a very common in oral narratives and a, this is a repetition. 
and uh, we may, as we have uh, in oral narrative, we may have a uh, repetition whereby it is repeating some words or expressions for the purpose of emphasis. And um, for example, we may have uh, uh, ones like uh, uh, maybe when we have, uh, especially from the, the narrative that we have about the birds going to to a party in the, in the sky, we may have uh, an artist saying they flew, and they flew, and they flew. You may also have uh, they rain and rain and rain. You find that this part is being repeated to emphasize maybe whereby talk of the, the rain and then and then the distance. We talk of the distance that possibly that they covered, and uh, you saying that. Uh, this repetition may be used now to bring out maybe the meaning or even to emphasize, to emphasize on a certain thing. Another feature that is there, we may also have a use of songs in oral narratives. It is very common to find that uh, so we have some songs in oral narratives that um, for example, there is this uh, this uh, this so this narrative about uh, about the Agikoyo, the time that there was a famine. I'll narrate it maybe after when we have some time. But you find that some of these fun these songs may be there within a narrative, and uh, it has its functions. Number one, whereby it may be used to break the boredom.
Hello? Hello, who is able to hear me? Hello? Hello, do you hear me? Hello? Who is able to hear me? Hello? Yes. Are you able to hear me? Yes. Good morning. Yes. Good morning. Now, welcome. There is still uh, some problems in network, but I hope that we are going to to proceed because we are very busy trying to rectify where the problem is. Can you continue now? Hello? Adrian, are you able to hear me? Yes. Adrian, are you able to hear me? Okay, yes. let's uh, continue. Uh, let's now continue from where we, we stopped. And uh, we had talked about the various uh, characteristics of, uh, of uh, oral narratives. That's where we were. And uh, and talked about the, the about repetition and talked about the opening formula. And talked about uh, closing formula. Then I wanted to talk, look at uh, the use of uh, ideophones. And uh, these ideophones whereby we use, uh, the, there is the use of uh, ones that imitate the movement or sounds made by the characters. And uh, one about this one, we may talk of uh, how uh, we cut the, bra the, the, the branch was cut, 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 the cut, the cut, C-U-T, and the one catcher, which is now represents or that imitates the sound made from the, the like the one K A C H A, that is the one catcher. Or we also have a whereby the man laughed ha 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 ha. That is in what we are referring to as the ideophones. Another one that you may look at is a direct translation and uh, when talk of direct translation is whereby the narrative is not in uh, its original language for example we may have a one that uh, some sentence a phrase that uh, one may say they remove work to mean they do their work or write me work says to employ me this is what I'm referring to as a use of words, direct translation. We may also have uh, another feature that we may refer to as a personification. One talk of personification is whereby now we have uh, inanimate or those uh, animals or objects that are not human beings are given human character or human what human abilities for example we may have uh, the bones such as a bone being able to speak some trees being to do what to 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 speak for example we may have uh, the trees whisper the tree branches whisper the whispering is uh, is something that is attributed to human beings but when we have the trees whispering, when we have a, a, a hair, for example, the, the, the narrative about the hair and the, and the hyena being able to communicate, to speak, now that we may refer to that one as a personification. We may have another huge 
feature that talks uh, maybe about uh, use of um, what you call a uh, hyperbole, hyperbole, which refers to in a simple terms, we talk of the exaggeration. And in this exaggeration, where is whereby you find that uh, something has been uh, exaggerated. For example, when we have the, uh, the we about the, uh, an, an ogre or a monster eating the whole community, that is part of what uh, what you may refer to is exaggeration. Akim, Akim, are you able to hear me? Akim? Hello, Akim, are you able to hear me? Akim? Adrian, are you able to hear me? Hello, Adrian. Adrian, are you able to hear me? Let's continue. Okay. We, apart from the ones that you've seen, we may have the uh, I and also talked about the use of song. I and talked about the use of songs. I talked about the use of songs, and we're saying that uh, these songs may be incorporated in the storytelling session that uh, may allow the the narrator to. Uh, for the, the not the narrator but the audience to participate in what in the storytelling session and uh, this song may bring out the character traits of what the characters it may also bring out the theme as i shall talk this uh, habit in the next uh, lesson another function of this song may be there to entertain Although not all of those songs in narratives that are meant to entertain, as, as we shall have in another narrative about uh, a certain girl by the name of boy, when, and be, when we shall be doing with what? With the narratives. We may also have the use of, um, I think these are the major ones. Now, I want to share with you one that uh, one narrative so that we may try to say if we have a, I want us to I want to share a, a narrative so that you may see if we have a, a, some of those. I would like us to uh, want to share with you this. Mm. 
now from what we have i would uh, like us to look at uh, the narrative that we have i don't know whether you are able to see it how many are able to see it are you able to see it now i don't know how many of you have been able to see just a
Can you go to hear us? Hello. Hello. Me. Yeah. Yes, Hi. Tom. All of us. Hello. Me. Now, I want you to go through this, uh, the narrative that I've posted, that I've shared, and let's uh, And let's see if, uh, please don't, uh, don't notify the work. Don't have to notify the work for you to be a hero. Now, looking at what I have posted that I've shared to the wall, I want you to identify some of those features that you've discussed in uh, throughout uh, the lesson. Let's see if we are able to, to get them. Look at the question, um, but first of all, go through the the narrative and just read it. And then uh, within five minutes or 10 minutes, I will just uh, ask some questions so that we may see if I will be able to, to identify some of those, uh, some of those features. Five minutes, please. No. Five minutes.
So I saw my mom's the end of the Now, let's continue. We have to continue. We have uh, another feature or characteristics of these uh, oral narratives. And, uh, we'll be to, and uh, this one could be, they usually have a moral lesson. I don't talk of moral lesson, we find that uh, these, these uh, oral narratives, they were being uh, passed from one generation to another. So in, uh, in order maybe to starting either to question as I said, but we still have uh, some moral lessons that we learn from these oral narratives. And uh, for example, the one that you may have uh, this, uh, the, we have uh, an oral narrative, for example, the, about uh, the, 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 the crocodile and the monkey that it's very common that you have ever had, that so we learn a more lesson that uh, we need to know as we choose our friends. We need to know what kind of friends we have, whether they have, uh, they are genuine, or just here in order to satisfy their own uh, what? Their own uh, intentions, just to have their own intentions, because not all uh, the, the, the friends that we may have are genuine. Others may be there in order to do what? Maybe to, to spoil our lives as they make mm -hmm. this. We also have, uh, apart from these uh, more lessons, because uh, as we say, they are usually there to educate. These oral narratives are most majorly there to educate. We may not exhaust all of them, but uh, the, for example, the one that I am posted and shared you with it with you with the in the stream on that uh, a few of them or few have misbehaved. I wanted us to go through it so that we may try to answer some of those questions that I usually ask because uh, in oral narratives, as you shall know, we have various uh, questions that are quite usually very common when it comes to oral narratives. And uh, one of those uh, questions being to identify those some of those uh, characters. Um, I want to narrate maybe to in uh, one of the narratives so that at least we may know and try to get some of those uh, narratives that we have. And one of them, let me read, I won't share with it with you on the screen just in do you just remain attentive have such kind of uh, questions i i just read 
that once just listen, be attentive as I read the narrative. I won't share it with you in the screen. That once upon a time, Hea and Hyena were very good friends. They visited each other every day and they handed their cows together. There came a time when the cows started dying one after the other. The two friends wanted to find out why the cows were dying. Hea said, in quote, let us go and kill our mothers and take our lives, their livers. We shall then cook and taste them, these livers. The bitter liver will show whose mother was making the cows die. At, one, at once, Hyena went and killed his mother. He took out the liver and cooked it. He went and hid his mother in the garden bush banana plants. He then went and killed the antelope, took out its liver and cooked it. The two friends met to eat their liver. is in the very sweet, saying here. So it was your mother who was making out the cows die. Hyena kept quiet and went home feeling sad. He moved from the old house to a small, a small one because now he had no mother. He did the same. After a short while, there was a great farmer in the land. The two friends decided that each of them was to look for food at alternate days, sharing an equal basis, sharing an equal on equal basis what was available. When it was a hyena's turn, he went and found only honeycombs without any honey. When Hyena brought this, he refused this because he had secretly gone to his mother who had given him some bananas. Then this went on for many days and Hyena grew thinner and thinner. Then he started worrying, how does my friend remain fat and he doesn't eat anything? I will find out. One day he followed him. He went to his mother as usual. Mother, mother, I have come. And the mother dropped the banana, some bananas, which he had ate, which he ate quickly. He then looked for. He then looked for some honeycombs and took them to their friend. This is where I could find my friend. The hyena kept quiet. The next day, he went to the banana plant at God. His voice, however, was very deep, and so no bananas were dropped for him. There, he was. There was an old hyena who was staying at the end of the, of the forest, and and used to give advice to people. So he asked Fred went to to her and told her his problems. So. Then he said, go put your, your tongue on the path of the black ants, he was told. Let them bite your tongue until it hurts. That's how your voice will be soft. Hyena went and did as he was told. When he went to hear his mother, his voice was as soft as his. Mother, mother, I have come. And his mother dropped bananas for, his, for him. Then he was told, then he told her, he told her to come out to greet him. Then she came down and saw it was Hyena. She screamed, but there was nobody to hear near to help her. Hyena killed her immediately. And the Hyena went and met here as usual, saying nothing about Hyena's mother. The following day, it was Hyena's turn. He went to his usual place. Mother, he called again. He climbed up. There was nobody. Having seen some blood on the on the ground, he grew. He knew what had happened to his mother. When he am got back to Hy to Hyena's house, he said nothing. At night, he took all cows, including Hyena's, and went away to live with them in another part of the country. That ended here. Had hyena's friendship. And that ends my story to you.
Now, looking at uh, having listened to that narrative, you may find that what we have discussed about the features of oral narratives is that uh, a question can be asked, identify three features in the story that are characteristics of oral narratives. And I'm certain that if you have listened to it and if you did listen to If you really listened to what we had discussed earlier on, you find that we have various features that are there that show us that uh, it is a oral narrative. And one of them being we have it here that um, we have an opening is that we have uh, an opening formula. We have an opening formula such as uh, once upon a time. Once upon a time marks the opening formula of our what? The opening formula of a narrative. And as you said, it has various functions because uh, if a question is asked now, identify feature, features of all narrative that are there, you find that uh, in our oral narrative here, we have, we have uh, someone or a phrase once upon a time. I remember saying that it has various functions, one of them being that it marks the, marks the beginning of our narrative. It also identifies who the one that is having what, that is having that is telling us the narrative. Again, another feature that we have seen here in this narrative is that it has an ending formula or the closing formula that in our sentence, in our narrative we have, and that is the end of my story too, which marks the oral, the end of this oral narrative. Again, as we see, it may also pave way for the next narrator. What another function of this one, it is that it is able to, it brings us the, as the listeners, the audience from our mind, from the world of imagination to the reality. Another feature that is evident in this narrative is that um, we have uh, what you've called personification, that these animals, these the hare and the, the hyena have been personified. They have been given human characters that they are able to communicate. They are able to communicate. They are able to uh, have what to rear livestock such as these cows such as this cow when you say that they used to graze and that is why they have been able to to have this human attribute that they are able to have the cows go to graze them they are able to go uh, do all what human beings are able to do and uh, if you are able to look at my the narrative you find that even the names of uh, these uh, these uh, characters, for example, the hyena. The name hyena starts with a capital letter in this uh, narrative of ours. Why? And yet uh, we said, remember that now when we go back to the the, the grammar, we say that uh, these types of uh, nouns that we have the proper and common. We find that uh, in this one we have uh, they are using the proper noun. I'm still that uh, in this one. that uh, we have uh, that their names is starting uh, start with starting with the capsulators meaning that they are just they, they are being used to refer to the people they just represent the people in our societies they are those people in societies that we have what the characteristics characteristics or just behave the same way that these animals are behaving as we have seen there's a in this narrative. We also say that in this uh, narrative, we usually have uh, narratives also have uh, the what you call the moral lesson. Again, 
uh, in this more lesson, do we have a more lesson in this narrative? Yes, that we have when we have, when we have our friends, when you're dealing with the friends, what sort or what kind of friends do we have? What is the intention? Just right, right now you have friends where you are, but when look at the friendship that the, the kinds of friends that you have, is the friendship genuine or could there be one who has his own motives? What we learn from this one, we have a lesson that uh, we, a lesson, for example, the lesson that we learn from this narrative is that uh, we should learn to respect. Let's learn to that, uh, or even the friendship should be genuine, not the, like the one that you have in the, this, uh, with these animals, this, uh, the hyena. And the, again, you should be able to do what, have respect to our, to our parents. At times we may hear some um, bad uh, things about our parents, but as long as they are parents, we need to respect them. Just not do as the way the, the, the hyena did after having been told by the hair that they should go and do kill their parents. We have a responsibility of taking care of our parents. Again, as you can see that uh, there is another, another feature that uh, maybe I did not mention when you're talking about the various uh, features of oral narratives, that uh, in oral narratives, we may also have a feature that you call uh, dialogue. Dialogue is whereby we have uh, maybe people, one is speaking, then the other one responds. And in this narrative, we have seen that uh, there are ones that are spoken, directly spoken by the, the hair, and there are those ones that are being now directly spoken by the hyena that is what called dialogue and when answering such a question you need to quote you have to to quote those uh, those ones that are being spoken again uh, we may have uh, then you also have another feature that is evident in this uh, narrative is that uh, we have um, what you call, as you talked of fantasy or that is imagination. You can say that uh, it's not possible for these uh, hyenas and, uh, to have what? The, to be able to have cows, to go rear the cows, to gaze cows, but it is only through imagination. That is what you're saying that we have fantasy. Again, we have another feature in this narrative that we may talk of uh, exaggeration, that this exaggeration may be there or hyperbole, as I am saying in, a, in another term. And this hyperbole, we may say now, you may see now the, the hair being able to control the cows as in grazes. You look, look at how the, the hair is and uh, is now able to go in there to grace, which is also hyperbole. Again, um, I think those are some of the character character uh, features or the characteristics of our narratives as we have uh, gone through. Then we may also, the next lesson that we shall look at, if we get time, maybe another week, is that we shall go through the various now types of oral narratives. As we say that in our literature, we have those groups, that we have those genres, as saying that we have, uh, uh, we have uh, in oral, oral literature that we have uh, oral narratives, which is the, those are the what you could refer to as the genres of oral literature. As we have oral narratives, the second group we may have the oral poems, stroke songs, and the other one which is now the 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 short forms that include the the tongue twisters, that may include the riddles may include the what you call the puns or jokes, the proverbs or those ones. But for the meantime, since we have started with the order narratives, we have uh, already talked about the features, the common characteristics or the features that are found in oral narratives. In the next lesson, maybe we shall look at now the various uh, types of these oral narratives because uh, we have to go to them quite a number of them. As we shall see, we have uh, some of these uh, strict narratives. I'm sure they're not very uh, new to you, 
We may also have uh, the ideological narratives as we, we shall see, and if they have their now specific features as you shall see. We may also have the maids, we may also have the legends. We may have so many, there are so many, and we shall go through them still through the within the, this course of the work. Now, we have a few minutes remaining, and uh, I would like to spend those five minutes. I will post, uh, I will now send another. Uh, let me check. Just a minute. One sixty-three. I'm going to post a, a narrative in a, your WhatsApp in the WhatsApp directory that you may try to answer some of the questions that uh, are likely to be asked. Um, I hope with that. Now, I hope In the remaining few minutes, unless uh, maybe I ask one of you to maybe comment on what you have learned, again, maybe give a summary of what we have done. And if you have something to say, you just raise your hand so that I may admit you for your contribution. Connection. Jerry, you have something to say? <laughs> 